talked about it in the context of Copaiba essential oil and the value and benefit that we saw with Copaiba. And so I want to do a little bit of review of that endocannabinoid system for you and perhaps give you a little bit more detail. The reason for the detail is that I think it's critical for the context that I'll be sharing with you today. But also, this is an emerging science. This is new information. It's not being completely cataloged, and it's not a closed chapter in any of the medical and scientific research that we look at. Instead, there's great opportunity to learn more. So you'll recall that I talked with you about CD1 and CD2 receptors. Now, receptors at their core, you know what they are. This is where we activate different processes or activities within the body, generally specific to cells. For example, CD2 receptors are found specifically within the cell membrane of many different types of cells. And so receptors play a critical role in the body's ability to be able to react and respond to a changing need in a changing environment. Now I see that everybody's got their phones out and I'm extremely flattered, but I am gonna say the one thing that Mark Wolford asked me to say. Now I'm just gonna say it, it doesn't mean you have to listen to me, <laughs> but I am gonna say it, and that is you can't record this morning, Mark, is that what you've asked me to tell them? But he just shrugged his shoulders and said, ah, I don't know, I don't really care, so. <laughs> let, me, let me just, if you're recording for your own reference, I think that's wonderful. If you're recording because you want to post and share, can I please ask you not to do that? We're gonna have very open conversation today, a very directed conversation today. And I wanna be able to do that freely. So let's talk about this system as a whole and give you a little bit more understanding. The endocannabinoid system, although it's varied and there's been a lot of implications associated with it, a lot of discussion about it, one of its main characteristics that you and I would be able to relate to very well in the context of what we do with the essential oils and what we know about essential oils is it helps to establish homeostasis in the body. Let me give you a couple of examples of that. For example, if we have some type of an acute injury, we have some type of a response that's occurring in the body for healing to take place, it's the activation of the CB2 receptors that would communicate with several different cell types could communicate with the immune cells, could communicate with the pro-inflammatory processes and block some of those processes. Even it has direct communication with the neurological tissue and cells within the body. And so it becomes this modulator, this system as a whole becomes a modulator for being able to balance out all of the different functions that are occurring in the body, many of them simultaneously. And so it's a real core factor for homeostasis. And you hear a lot of people talking about the endocannabinoid system and its homostatic pro properties. To me, this is a valuable piece, but it's not the only piece of the endocannabinoid system. Now, if we look at the receptors, a good way to classify those is to say the CB1 receptors primarily are located within the central nervous system and the CB2 receptors are primarily located, primarily located outside of the central nervous system. Now that doesn't mean that they're exclusively there, because in fact there are CB1 receptors located all throughout the body, but the greater concentration is in the central nervous system. And the same thing holds true for CB2 receptors. They're located all throughout the body, but the greatest concentration is in the periphery. Now there's been a lot of discussion about other things that the endocannabinoid system does. And so I'd like to highlight a couple of those. By far the greatest capacity we have for CB2 activation. Now remember, these are the receptors that are found within cell membranes that cause excitation or we have some type of a response that occurs within that cell that either influences that cell directly or it is influential to a cascade of other cells. It's a communication opportunity as well as a directive opportunity within isolated or specific cells. The greatest preponderance of those exists within our immune system as a whole. Now we all know and understand the value of immunity. We understand the importance of that. And the immune system carries a significant role, of course, in the context of our health. One of the challenges that we face, and perhaps why this is a significant feature associated with the endocannabinoid system, 
is because we all have our own challenges specific to immunity in our body. We're in various stages. We either have an immune system that is very capable, but we're being exposed to things that exceed our immune capability, or we have an immune system that somehow has been compromised to some extent. And when we look at the immune system as a whole, and when we look at disease and illness in this country, and in first world countries throughout the whole of our global enterprise as a company, one of the things that we see characteristically is pro-inflammatory responses in the body. Inflammation is one of the critical drivers of what we have in modern disease now. And inflammation in any of its stages can and is destructive to tissues within the body. Now we have an inflammatory response that we can support, but we also have pain that's associated directly with that. New and emerging research now is being very specific to the CD2 receptors. Traditionally, when we've talked about pain and the modulation of pain, nociception controlling that within the body, it's been a conversation that's been really specific about CD1 receptors. I was in a meeting the other day, uh, Dr. Osgood Thorpe was there, I think Granny might have been there, some of my partners were there. But there was this discussion and there was a question that was arising about what's the difference between CD1 and CD2 in terms of pain perception. I thought Dr. Osgothorpe did a good job of describing that. CB1 receptors makes it so you don't care that you're having pain. <laughs> CB2 receptors, now <laughs> some of you got that and understood yeah. that. <laughs> CB2 receptors actually block the sequence of, of pain. It's a neurological sequence. It's a neurological consequence that says we need to stop this cascade. And so one is different than the other, but they both have very similar effects in that context. Now the other thing that we know about CB2 receptors is that they affect multiple pathways associated with inflammation. And as I just mentioned, when we look at the consequence of disease and illness as it exists right now, most of these are pro-inflammatory disease processes. If I were to ask you to hold your hand up, how many of you know somebody with diabetes? Hold your hand up, keep it in the air. How many of you know somebody, keep that hand up. How many of you know somebody with arthritis? How many of you know somebody with cancer? <laughs> right, I mean, we, every hand in the room is up. And in most cases, both hands are up. And we can go right down the list. These are all inflammatory diseases. So learning how to control inflammation is critical. Now, in convention last year, we showed you a lot of new information that we're studying, which we're going to continue forward with now, as we look at the biological aspects of how the body reacts and responds to different essential oils. In this context, how the body reacts and responds to activation of the CB2 receptors is critical. And we know that there's multiple pathways. There's the MAPK pathway, there's the 5 LOX pathway, there's even very finite detail in talking about interruption of arachidonic acid and how it is a producer of inflammation. So in context, this is a very broad spectrum activity that we see in each one of the receptor types associated with the endocannabinoid system. Now stay with me for just a moment because I also want to talk with you about cell protection. These are what I would call the pillars of the endocannabinoid system. Activating the body's full immune capability. Having the body to be able to establish homeostasis. Being able to control proper inflammation within the body. That uncontrolled inflammatory response that leads to degradation of tissue and many different types of disease and illness that we now face. But we also have, we'd add as a final pillar, this ability to be able to protect ourselves. Antioxidant capability, and one of the things that we see is we see greater activation of the enzymes that are critical in protecting the body this way. And so antioxidant activity becomes this corner or a big pillar associated with what we see within the system. Now that is a foundation we can look to. Remember when I spoke a couple of years ago, and we've spoken many times since then,